In this lecture, we're going to discuss the different classification of metals. We've already discussed what metals are and what what is their general behavior. That they have they're malleable, they have high melting and boiling points, and they have delocalized electrons which conduct electricity. And we have also discussed that uh, where in the periodic table metals uh, can be found. But now we're going to classify those metals into further subgroups. The first one is called the alkali metals. Alkali metals belong to group one. So if you look at group one in the periodic table, they contain lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. Now, they have certain properties that would be slightly different from the other metals. The number one property is that these metals have relatively... So they have relatively low melting... Relatively low melting points compared to other metals. So their melting point, some of the metals uh, melt very, very easily as, uh, if you look at group 1 metals. So they have relatively low melting and boiling points and they are very, they are soft compared to other metals. Other metals are relatively a lot stronger. You need a lot of force to actually reshape them. Uh, so they are malleable but they need, require a very strong force. But when you talk about al alkali metals, these metals can be easily reshaped so they are very soft and they can be they can be cut with a can be cut with a knife and now the other property of alkali metals is the third property is that they have low densities as well so they are very light compared to other metals for example if you look at gold and lead they are extremely heavy metals but those are transition metals. But if you look at group 1 metals, they, they have very low densities and they have very less weight. So, uh, and especially lithium, uh, the first three, lithium, sodium and potassium. They have uh, a lower density compared to water, so they are going to float. If you, if you put them in water, they're going to float on top of water. So they float on water compared to the other metals. The fourth property of alkali metals is that they are extremely so they are extremely reactive and most of the reactions are going to be they're very going they're going to be very very explosive reactions And reactivity increases down the group so the reactivity of these metals increases down the group and the reason for that is that uh, down the group uh, the size of the atom becomes bigger and bigger so it becomes easier and easier to lose electrons whenever a metal reacts it always loses electrons so whenever we talk about the reactivity of a metal we're basically talking about uh, how quickly that metal loses electrons to some other uh, element especially a non-metal so whenever metals react they're going to be losing electrons so reactivity increases down the group this brings us to the fifth point which is since we have discussed reactivity that the reactions are going to be explosive now the reason why these are called alkali metals is because if you if you uh, rea react them with water they have very violent reactions with water so the reactions are going to be explosive and an alkaline solution would be produced. For example, if you pick Na and you react it with H2O, then they're going to react and they're going to produce NaOH plus hydrogen gas. So for all alkali metals, this reaction applies. The metal is going to react with water. A hydroxide is going to be produced and hydrogen gas would be produced. So uh, the first observation, you get a lot of questions on the observation. Since hydrogen gas is produced, so you're going to see effervescence or you can say fizzing could be seen. So, so the metal would fizz on the surface. Uh, it's going to float because it has a low density. It's going to float 
on water in a very violent reaction would take place it's going to be an explosive reaction and an effervescence of hydrogen gas or fizzing of hydrogen gas would be seen and also remember any hydroxide produced uh, all group 1 hydroxides so all group 1 hydroxides so for any metal in group 1 if it reacts with water their hydroxides all group 1 hydroxides are soluble so they are going to produce a very alkaline solution because when a hydroxide dissolves it's going to produce it's going to produce OH ions so if this equation is written for any group 1 metal the equation would be the same every time it's going to be an explosive reaction the reactivity would increase down the group so the metals that are lower down in this group are going to have an even more explosive reaction the metals would have low density so they're going to float on top of the uh, su on the surface of water and a fizzing or effervescence would be seen and all group 1 hydroxides are very soluble so the so the solution formed would be a very alkaline solution which is why all these metals are called alkali metals because whenever they react with water they're going to end up producing a very very alkaline solution and the last point is that group 1 compounds so any group 1 compound formed these group 1 compounds they would be they would be white in color so they would be white solids and they would all be soluble so they are all are going to be soluble and if they are soluble they, so the solution that they are going to end up forming would be colorless solutions so they are going to end up forming colorless solutions so all group 1 compounds are white in color and they are soluble and if they dissolve in water they are going to end up forming colorless solutions in this lecture we are going to discuss the alkaline earth metals these are metals that are located in group 2 and they include beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium and radium the first thing about these metals is that they all have uh, two electrons in the valence shell so the neutral atom two electrons in the valence shell now if they have two electrons in the valence shell since they are metals they are going to be losing electrons so they always have a charge of plus two so they are going to lose two electrons when they react and when they lose two electrons they are going to get a charge of plus two so the oxidation state is plus two now beryllium is uh, slightly different it doesn't lose electrons but beryllium is not in the course for ordinary level or O levels so beryllium uh, makes covalent compounds it's a very small atom so it tends to attract those electrons very um, very strongly so it doesn't lose electrons like the other metals so beryllium is an anomaly so we're going to ignore that for now now all these metals are going to lose two electrons and uh, whenever they're going to react these metals are also they are also reactive but the reactivity is uh, it's less compared to compared to the alkali metals which were group 1 metals so it's less compared to group 1 metals and the other thing about reactivity is that the reactivity increases down the group so as you move down the group these metals become more and more reactive so because the atom becomes bigger and if, you, if it's a bigger atom it's easier to lose electrons so whenever they're going to react they're going to lose two electrons so bigger atoms are going to lose electrons easily so hence uh, reactivity would increase down the group now when we talk about reactivity a very common thing that is discussed is uh, the reactions with water now there are two types of reactions that are discussed when you uh, w w that are discussed when you're reacting them with water one is uh, the reaction of mg or uh, with water and when MG reacts with the water, it's going to produce 
MgO plus hydrogen gas will be given off. Now this reaction, it's a, it's a very slow reaction and for this reaction to take place because it's ha it has a very high activation energy you need uh, you need steam so you're not going to use liquid water because then that reaction would be very very slow so you need steam and that steam should be at high temperatures only then would that reaction take place now since that steam would be at very high temperature you remember uh, an oxide is formed instead of a hydroxide because hydroxides get decomposed uh, because at high temperatures hydroxides get decomposed into oxides so so remember an oxide will be produced the other reaction that is frequently discussed is the reaction of calcium with H2O now this reaction would be able to take place because calcium is lower down in group 2 so this reaction would take place at a better more favorable rate and in this reaction calcium hydroxide is formed and hydrogen gas is given off and this reaction it's a it's a slow reaction in the cold so it's a slow reaction if you if you if you're using cold water but if you increase temperature the reaction would speed up but even then uh, you're going to notice this reaction this reaction would be occurring at a favorable rate compared to magnesium magnesium's reaction with cold water is going to be very very slow so this reaction would be slightly faster so you're going to see slight effervescence when you add calcium to cold water meanwhile strontium barium and uh, radium radium is a radioactive isotope so we're not going to discuss that strontium and barium are going to have similar reactions but these reactions would be um, they're going to be vigorous and because the activity is increasing down the groups so so their reactions like group one metals they're going to become more vigorous reactions uh, we're not going to discuss radium because that's uh, that's uh, that's a radioactive element the other thing that we need to study for uh, or and learn about uh, alkaline earth metals is is the is the alkalinity why do you call them alkaline because when they react with water they, they're going to form hydroxides and oxides so the reason uh, we call them alkaline is because they are forming an alkali uh, now it's it's not a very strong alkali for example magnesium hydroxide when it is formed when you react magnesium with water uh, it's not it's not very soluble and since it's not very soluble that means that it's not going to produce a lot of OH ions so it's not going to be very alkaline its pH is around uh, its pH is roughly around 8 to 10 it's not very alkaline but as you move down the group uh, if you look at calcium hydroxide now when you come when you come to calcium hydroxide when calcium reacts with water it forms calcium hydroxide this one is partially soluble so its solubility increases and its pH becomes uh, more alkaline, it becomes greater than 10 more OH ions are produced when calcium hydroxide dissolves in water. And as you move down the group, strontium hydroxide and barium hydroxide, let's ignore radium hydroxide, uh, strontium and barium hydroxide, their solubility increases. So as you move down the group, uh, solu they, these compounds are soluble which is why they're going to be very alkaline and they're going to produce a lot of OH ions so their pH is approximately around uh, 11 to 14 depending on the concentration so as you move down the group the alkalinity would increase they become more alkaline We will discuss the melting points and the density of alkaline earth metals. Uh, so they're not, uh, they, don't, they don't have a very, very high melting or boiling point or they don't have a very high density, but uh, the melting points and densities are going to be slightly higher when you compare them to group one metals.
and they would all sink in water. They're not going to float in water. Remember the group one metals, the alkaline metals, alkali metals, uh, ha had a tendency to float on water. They had lower densities, but all of these group two metals, they are going to sink in water. And the last thing that you need to know is that the compounds, the most common compounds are white in color, And if they're soluble, so they're going to make uh, colorless solutions. But it depends if they're soluble. So some very common compounds that you're going to study later on are calcium carbonate, which is called uh, limestone. This is also sometimes referred to as marble because ma one of the components, major components of marble is calcium carbonate and it's also referred to as chalk. So it's, it's, a, it's white in color, which, uh, so this is limestone. Then you have another compound which is called uh, lime. So lime is calcium hydroxide or calcium oxide. This is called lime and calcium oxide is referred to as slake lime uh, because uh, if you heat a calcium hydroxide it loses its water and becomes slake lime which means that it's without water